Well, good morning. I'm Jeff Vincent, and I'm the Stand Back Dean of the Nicholas School of the Environment. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Nicholas School's 2018 Recognition Ceremony. Today, we celebrate the hard work and accomplishments of the more than 150 Master of Environmental Management, Master of Forestry, and Doctoral Philosophy students seated before you. Students, we appreciate you and your dedication, and we applaud you. We offer congratulations to, uh, as well to your families and friends who have supported you in your journey to reach this momentous point. This is a joyous occasion, so rather than holding your applause until the end, I invite you to express your support and enthusiasm whenever you feel so inclined. So why don't we practice again? This year, the Nichols School is graduating 127 Master of Environmental Management students and three Master of Forestry students. Those 127 MEM students include 16 students who are earning their degree in the Duke Environmental Leadership Program, which is good, you got the idea. That's our distance learning based program designed for working environmental professionals. Our graduating MEM and MF students include several who have earned dual degrees. Ten have earned an MBA along with the MEM or MF. Four have earned the MF concurrently with the MEM. We should cheer for them too. Okay? And one is earning the Master of Arts in teaching in addition to the MEM. As best we've been able to determine, the last concurrent MAT degree in the Nicholas School was in 2003, so this ceremony is a once in 15 years experience, folks. Most of our graduating students began their programs two years ago. Students, you will surely recall that a solar eclipse marked the, your arrival here. While I recall thinking, is the eclipse a cosmic comment on Duke's decision to appoint me as interim dean? But as this brilliant morning signifies, after two years of exposure to our brilliant faculty, you have been, you've completed the journey from that You've completed your journey from that dim beginning to enlightenment. That was supposed to be a joke. I mean, it's true. It's true. Okay, in addition to our master's students, 36 of our students have earned doctoral degrees this year. This is one of the largest graduating classes of PhD students we've ever had. Yesterday afternoon, many of the graduating PhD students gathered with their advisors, their families, and their friends in Love Auditorium. During that academic love-in, the faculty advisors spoke about their advisees and their accomplishments, including their post-graduation plans. While some of our PhD graduates have already left to start their postdoctoral work, we'll have the honor of recognizing 20 of them again here today by reading their names and dissertation titles. After spending five or more years here, our PhD students deserve the right to be recognized many times and in many ways. <laughs> students of all degrees, I commend you for your academic and professional accomplishments. In addition, I thank you for the contributions you have made to the Nichols School community. We placed much emphasis on strengthening that community during the past two years creating a sense that we're a single school, despite our many different educational programs, our many different fields of research, and our location on two campuses separated by 200 miles of North Carolina coastal plain. Class of 2018, during your time here, and in collaboration with other students and our faculty and staff, you've created many connections that have helped to make us a more inclusive school. PhD students, this year you organized the school's first PhD symposium an important step toward building a community among our doctoral students who are in six different programs. The founders of our Nicholas PhD Advocacy Council, which has emerged as a strong voice in support 
of doctoral student interests are in this graduating class. DICE and BLC are a diverse and inclusive community for the environment and our Black and Latino Club co-sponsored many events celebrating our diverse cultures, including game nights and our second annual international potluck, even tastier than the first time around. Sadly, my knowledge of 1960s Motown music proved less useful to my team during African American Trivia Night this year than it did last year as my team slipped from first place to second place. Clearly, it's time for me to update my Spotify play playlist. Our revitalized Africa Environmental Initiative, thank you, Raja, um, hosted an Experience Africa event which highlighted African art, dance, food, culture, and politics. Students who helped us grapple with challenging social issues that confront us both inside and outside the academy. DICE led deeper discussion events in response to the Me Too and Time's Up movements and conflicts between police and communities of color in this country. One of our newest student organizations, OSTEM, co-sponsored a panel discussion to better understand issues that Asian and Pacific Islanders in the LGBTQ communities face in STEM fields. You contributed to the success of our new Global Connections Initiative, which focuses on integration of our international and domestic student communities. Events under that initiative included a Global Connections Dinner and photo scavenger hunt during orientation, a moon festival celebration in our rooftop garden, and a Lunar New Year celebration in honor of the Year of the Dog. And yes, we fed you at all those events. <laughs> Our friends in New Haven may have a school of forestry and environmental studies, but we are proud to be a school of food and the environment. <laughs> Graduating students, rest assured that even after you leave, you will still be able to follow us on our various social media platforms to learn when and where to find leftover food after our many events. To my knowledge, we are the first school of any kind to offer this lifelong meal plan to our alumni. <laughs> but you will need to get to the food before our current students do. At the end of this weekend, the class of 2018 will join the distinguished ranks of our alumni. I often say that if one wants to judge the quality of a school's educational programs, look at its alums. Our alums are the proof that we're creating leaders of consequence for a sustainable future, and you can find them all over the world. And our alums enrich our students' experience by providing virtual and in-person networking, serving as guest speakers, hosting workplace visits, participating in career panels, serving as clients for master's projects, and in many other ways.